Today, I'm going to show you how I took this neglected Dodge Charger and I made thousands of dollars on this flip. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to increase the value of your own vehicle. If you're new here, my name is Bubba Ray and I own a detailing and paint correction shop here in the Los Angeles area. To help educate folks on how they can enhance their own cars, I decided to make a series of videos flipping cars purchased online using inexpensive tools on a budget. It's not about the price or the size of your tool that counts, it's how you use it. Step one, be patient when looking for a vehicle. This takes time. It could be a matter of a day or even take a month to locate that perfect deal, but they are out there. Follow the process and you will see. Look on cargurus.com, Facebook Marketplace, Auto Tempest, and others. Start with a price range in mind of what you can afford to spend and what amount of money you want to make back or what percentage back on your investment. It helps to search for ASAP. This Dodge Charger was already undervalued since the seller was going through divorce and didn't want to share the profit with his baby mama. So he listed it under the Kelly Blue Book trade-in value. If we can get all them OnlyFans stains off the car and clean out them deep and dusty cracks, we can enhance the value even more. Now what he wrote was, I need this gone ASAP, which translates to, I do not mind if you bend me over on the press. You now have my attention. Step two, beginning the washing process. All the tools and products I used on this car are in the description. DIY Detail sent me just about their whole lineup of products to try out, so that's what I'm going to be using, and man, they worked amazingly well. I almost always start with the engine, and today is no different. What's weird is that this car wasn't as bad as it originally looked in the ad, and the engine bay was actually pretty okay. Make sure that you cover up any electronics when using water in the engine bay, and if you are using a pressure washer, just, just keep the wand a little bit further away than where you normally would if you were pressure washing paint. If you stick it too far in, you're gonna cause a pregnancy. Disaster, you're gonna cause a disaster. After rinsing most of the crud off, I sprayed DIY details all clean around the bay. On to some of the brushes and Junior and I got to work. To honor Ivan LaCroix, the guru of DIY detail, I decided to twirl up my mustache like he does a little bit. Now, Ivan, I want to see you rock some jean shorts in the next video like I do. I dare you, my friend. I then sprayed good old Meguiar's hyperdressing all over the bay liberally. It'll make them plastics have a deep, rich gloss. I leave this sit, and to be honest, I don't rinse it off. When you do start up your car, the leftover residue will smoke a tiny bit, but don't worry, it's not an issue at all. Right now, I need you to take that lock button to pound town. Step three, wash in the car. Pre-soak your car with a good car shampoo. For this, I'm using DIY details. Incredible sub. Do not use dish soap. If you're the type of person who does use dish soap, then wisdom has been chasing your whole life. The only problem is you're obviously much faster than wisdom. Rinse this off and apply your pre-soak again. In a bucket, I had DIY Details Rinseless Wash. This stuff is great at busting through crud, but also it'll mitigate water spots if you have hard water. I used DIY's special sponge and it really did a great job of picking up all the funk on that paint. Side note. You definitely want to take off any jewelry you got on, including any rings, because the last thing you want to do is bang your finger in it too hard. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. And make sure that you're going to go ahead and wear some gloves, proctology style. Step four, wheels and tires. I know most people do the rims and the tires first before the car. I prefer to actually do them at the same time if possible. While I was washing the car, Junior did those wheels and tires. Before this, we went back to the DIY detail all clean. Instead of using the iron remover, and I decided that if needed, yes, we would go to the iron remover, but again, this was in much better shape than those photos led us to believe. I kept everything foamed up while Junior was attacking them wheels because it should always be lubed. 
I also have another one that I just bought and I'm about to flip for even more profit. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. This one also has rock chip repair, wet sanding that's gonna occur on the paint, and dadgum, and I'm gonna show you how to do it all. Super easy. Step five, decontamination is a big topic and we'll break it down as simply as possible. First, we had to address all them water spots, so we used DIY Detail's water spot remover. I sprayed this all over the surface really liberally. Like really liberally. Like Bernie Sanders liberally. Following this, Junior came by and wiped it off. Just look at the enthusiasm this boy has. I can't blame him, I ain't paying him nothing. But ain't that why we had kids in the first place? Free labor, baby, cha-ching. Following the water spot remover, we then stepped to the DIY detail tree sap remover. This stuff is amazing, but also interesting. It doesn't just remove tree sap, it'll remove adhesive residue or just about any type of other funk. I think they actually should have named this the Super Sticky Booger Remover 10,000 because it is very diverse at what it can do. I sprayed it on and I allowed it to dwell for a moment and then I attacked it with a pad and it did a remarkable job. Please, step away from the Goo Gone. Put it down. You don't need it. Just get the DIY Detail Tree Sap Remover. One, very helpful tool to have when washing or detailing is a small step stool. Never underestimate the value of a step stool. You'll be safe standing on it instead of having the door open, balancing like a ballerina on the door jam while working. Clay bar. To properly clay bar the surface, you must use a good lubricant. I use DIY Details rinseless wash sprayed onto the entire surface, and then I sprayed the DIY Details iron remover, and I began to go to town. You don't need to use both the rinseless and the iron remover, but I had it and I wanted to be really thorough. Junior used a clay sponge and I used a clay towel. If you are going to clay the surface of a ceramic coated vehicle, I would only recommend using the clay towel from DIY Detail along with the iron remover or the rinseless wash. The reason for this is that virtually all clay media causes a slight marring on the paint's clear coat. While doing this, I fully expected to see that marring, but I saw none where I used the towel. On Junior's side with that little clay sponge, there was a tiny amount. Again, that's just to be expected. We're going to be going through a single stage polish anyway, so that just wasn't a concern. But with ceramic coated vehicles, yeah, you want to be careful. You don't want to mar that up. Don't forget to clay the windows because you also get bug guts and boogers on it. Step six. Polishing is a very complicated yet simple subject. Weigh your expectations out as to what result you really want. In this case, I just wanted a really deep gloss to increase the value. Wet sanding was not something that I felt was worthwhile, so that ain't happening. And I did a test spot with a damp Rupes DA Fine Pad and DA Fine Polish, and I got the result I wanted. It's more about the skill of the technician than the products used themselves. I am willing to bet you that I could use mayonnaise coating one of them really cheap pads from Hobo Fre uh, Harbor Freight and I could get an amazing result. Actually, that'd be a really good idea for a video. I think I'm gonna do that one too. <laughs> Stick around, you'll see that. Understand that the machine is gonna do the work and you do not need to manhandle it guide the machine where it needs to go. Be one with the random orbital. Let it guide you along the pathway. Normally, I would polish an entire panel and then wipe it off, but to demonstrate here, I polished, then wiped, polished, then wiped. Step seven, ceramic coating is actually the most straightforward and simple part of the project. It is the cherry on top of the sundae. For this, I use the Nassail ZR53. Before you apply the ceramic, you must remove any potential contaminants from the surface, such as residual polish that's probably left behind. So what I used was the Nassail Clean Pre-Cleaner. 
This ain't rocket science, but still read the instructions. It's super important to understand what you're working with. In the kit came five suede applicators that wrap around the applicator block. You place a bit of it onto the suede and then apply the ceramic coating in a crosshatch pattern for even distribution. Via the instructions. Once beading occurs, it takes 30 seconds in normal conditions. Gently wrap the excess product from the surface using the light gray Nassial microfiber cloth. Note, where it said 30 seconds in normal conditions. With the temperature in my shop and the humidity, it began to bead at around 60 seconds. This means that you really need to just pay attention. For those of you that have not heard of Nassial, that's a shame, but a blessing that you have now. They've been around a long time overseas and are one of the only companies in the world that can synthesize their own ceramics. The name Nassial stands for Nano Silicon Dioxide Liquid. You want to go ahead and level it out. You don't want high spots. If you happen to see high spots, try and get it off as quickly as possible. Otherwise, if it does harden, just like any ceramic, you're going to have a booger every time because you're going to have to polish it right off, may even have to sand it off. The interior of the car was an absolute breeze. All I had to do was throw out all the garbage that was in there, which there was quite a bit, vacuum it real well, take them floor mats out. They were rubber, so they cleaned up real well with DIY details, all clean. Then we used DIY details interior cleaner across the surfaces of all the plastics, all the trim, and the seats themselves. There was no need to do any extracting, remove the seats, because it was actually, again, in pretty darn good condition. The shine on this car is just magnificent. And because of that, I was able to unload it for $21,500, making the total profit $7,000 before all the cost of the products purchased. That ain't bad at all. The next car has a ton of pain issues. I, I mean a ton. 